Hey, and welcome back. So, up until now, maybe you have been thinking that uh, this course is, I don't know, maybe boring or super technical. Well, up until now, we have been covering the basics. So, I promise you, we're almost done with the basics now. So, from the very next episode, we're going to see something uh, a lot more interesting. But today we are going to look at something called CPU flags and something called bitwise instructions. So we have looked at the, the CPU before. So we know that it has the A register. We know that it has the X register and the Y register. But there's uh, some more stuff in there. So let's take a look at that. So the first three are familiar to us. The accumulator, the X register and the Y register. But then we have a few more. Uh, and by the way, when there are eight zeros, that's one byte. So all of these, except this one, all of those are uh, one byte each. This one, however, that's two bytes. All right. So, uh, the stack pointer, uh, we won't be looking at that today, because there will be a separate episode in a while uh, when we will, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, where we'll, we'll be looking at uh, the stack. Uh, the program counter. So, without going uh, into super detail here, uh, the program counter is the thing in the CPU that keeps track of where we are in our code. So inside the program counter there's a memory address. Uh, so there's always a memory address inside here. That memory address contains the in this instruction, the very next instruction in the code. So this is constantly updated. So uh, the processor CPU always knows where to go next because of this because of the program counter. So this is uh, pretty important. And now we haven't really looked at this, but uh, let's take a look at it now. So let's imagine that we're looking inside the Commodore 64 memory right now. And let's just start at address 400. So every memory address contains a number and I just put zeros all over here. Uh, a memory address can't be blank. It has, always has a number, uh, either a number like 4, 5, 57, whatever, or a zero. And when you boot up the Commodore 64, um, I think most uh, addresses are set to zero. Well, let's not get into that. Anyway, the point here is that uh, I told you that uh, all our code takes up space. Not just graphics, music, stuff like that, but our code as well. Now, when we were looking at, at uh, opcodes, we could see that uh, every opcode, like for example LDA, has a length, which means that's how many bytes that opcode takes up in the Commodore 64 memory. So, for example, um, if we use this one, this method of uh, using the LDA called absolute, that takes up three bytes. So um, don't worry too much about the different ones here. But if you look at these ones, you can see what's going on. So LDA with a hashtag in front of it like that, that means load an actual number. So not, uh, don't load a memory address, load an actual number because of this hashtag. That's called immediate. So immediate addressing, if we, uh, if we do that, if we're just loading a number, then it just takes up two byte. The instruction just takes up two byte. If we are loading a, uh, a content, the contents of a memory cell, so if we're loading from a memory address, like for example this, 
then it takes up three bytes. So why is that? Well, let's imagine here, let's see if we can put them side by side like that. So let's imagine that this is the memory of the Commodore 64. And let's say that uh, we're starting to write some code at memory address 4000. So what are we uh, putting in here? Well, we are putting in, we want to load something. So in our code, we write LDA and we want to load the contents from memory address 2000, for example. So our code would look like this, LDA 2000. So here I'm loading the contents of the memory address 2000, whatever is in there. So how would this, <coughs> excuse me, how would that look in, um, how would that, <coughs> that look inside the memory? Well, first of all, we need to take a look at this. So load A with the memory address. That has this uh, upcode. So in um, hexadecimal, which uh, if you remember uh, is what um, the machine code uses. So when this code of ours is translated into machine code, then it will be all numbers all over the place. So anyway, LDA and the memory address. That's hexadecimal AD. So if we look inside um, the Commodore 64 memory now, here at address 4000, it would be AD. So that means LDA, and uh, it means LDA with a memory address. If you look up here, LDA with a number, hashtag, you know, a number that has a different code, that's A9. But in this case, we're loading a memory address, so it's AD. All right, so that's the code for LDA. But we just took up one byte now. It says here three bytes. Well, it's because when you write it like this, this is the LDA part. AD, that's the LDA. But we also need to specify the memory address. So if we look at our code here, we said LDA load from address 2000. All right, so right now in our code, we have just written, now we're in the memory. So we have written LDA, but we need to write like that. So again, this backwards thing, uh, here it says memory address 2000, but we can't write 2000. Um, in one memory cell, because let's uh, pick up our calculator. Um, 2000 in hexadecimal, that's 8192 in decimal. That's way beyond 255. Remember, one memory address can just contain a number between 0 and 255. So we can't put uh, memory address 2000 in one cell. So we need to split it up like this. But why are things backwards like this? Well, I wish I could give you a really nice and simple answer. But uh, the thing is that uh, the Commodore 64 and a lot of other uh, retro, co retro computers uh, use something called Little Endian. That's where you write, um, if we can get our code there, that's where you write this part first and then this part. Now, again, let's not get too much into detail right now at least, but um, we, uh, we will see this uh, later on as well. But 
in our code, we don't have to worry about it. But for example, here in the memory, uh, it's stored like this. So uh, starting at memory address 4000, we're starting our code here at memory address 4000. So we write LDA memory address 2000. All right, so LDA, now we run the uh, assembler and our code is translated into uh, machine code and put into the Commodore 64 memory. So LDA is turned into AD here at memory address 4000. And this memory address is split up. So we have 00, zero here and we have 20 in the next address like that. All right. So what am I getting at here? Well, let's not forget that I started by talking about the program counter and that the program counter uh, always has the next address, uh, you know, the, the, the next instruction stored in here. So let's say that in our program, the next instruction was jump to whatever, uh, some label all right so some label that's of course a memory address but let's not worry about that right now so uh, the jump command that's 4c so we would have 4c in there all right so uh, this memory address 4003 that's um, what's in the, the program counter when we start the code uh, here um, okay let's not get super technical here but the the, um, uh, the computer knows that this uh, takes up three bytes so it's going to count uh, three uh, so this is the next address it knows that LDA with, with the uh, code AD here takes up three bytes so it's going to count down to here and it knows that this is the next address to execute so that's what's stored in the program counter all right I spent way more time than I had planned on the program counter but hopefully that makes sense and we also got a little uh, peek at how the memory actually works uh, when we start writing code and how stuff is put in there. All right, enough about the program counter. So let us go back to this CPU. Let me remove this. So that's the program counter. Now. I was going to talk about CPU flags, so let's look at that. Now there's a byte down here in the CPU. Remember this whole thing is the CPU. So CPU flags or stat uh, status register as it's sometimes called. That's one bit, but each uh, one byte, but each of the bits in here has a different meaning except the one where there's just a line uh, this one is unused but these other ones are uh, are used by the, the cpu so for example the c here that's the carry flag uh, we touched on this last time and we're not going to go into super detail in this uh, episode either but there's a great uh, web page here that talks about this. So it uh, explains it explains the different flags. So if you're interested in reading up on this in detail, I'm going to leave the link uh, down below. But as here uh, yeah, um, here you can say uh, see that um, the N here that's the negative flag. 
so it's set when an operation results in a negative number. Now, negative numbers in 6502 uh, assembly, that's a whole thing in and of itself. So we're not gonna go into that because it's pretty complicated. Normally you just think, okay, there's minus five. Well, that's easy. Well, we don't have this minus five thing. So it, it's a little strange how that works. And uh, we're not going to use negative numbers in our code. So I won't be, be covering that here. But if you, um, as it says here, if an operation results in a negative number, so if you subtract uh, five from two, then it would be minus three, then there would be <clears throat> this zero would be set to one. So uh, these bits are often called flags. Instead of calling it a bit, they're called flags. So if uh, we did an operation subtraction and it resulted in a negative number, this would be set to one. Let's uh, say that that's enough. So the next one <clears throat> is called the overflow flag. That's set when a signed addition or subtraction results in overflow. So this one and the um, carry flag, those are very similar. And um, we're definitely, definitely not going to go into detail. So let's just, um, let's just leave it at that because we're just taking an overview here. Um, basically, what I want is, I want you to know that this thing is there. This is not something that we're going to be working with directly. Uh, a lot of this just happens in the background. But as I said, when uh, if you get uh, really advanced, you know how everything works, then you can definitely do things with, for example, the carry flag. But um, the point is that uh, the CPU has this, uh, it says CPU flags here, but let's call it status register. Uh, that's often what it's called in, in books. Uh, these bits are flipped on and off based on what happens. So the zero flag, for example, that's a little interesting actually. <clears throat> It says here, set when an operation results in a zero. So the zero flag here set, is set to one if uh, an operation is set uh, to zero. And that's actually something we looked at last time. So load A with 50, uh, compare with 50, branch if equal my label. So this branch if equal, that checks the zero flag and if it's uh, if it's set so if the operation was zero uh, then branch if equal is true so it's going to go to my label all right i feel like we're getting uh, a little uh, uh, going a little too much into detail here so let's not um, spend the uh, super Let's not spend any more time on this because, as I said, the CPU flags, basically, I just need you to know that they are there. And just, just uh, roughly know what they are. So, um, you know what, I think you'll just leave it for now. We know that there's something called CPU flags in here. Now we have also looked at the program counter. All right, fine, I think it's enough. So let's leave these two things for now. Now this other thing, that's a little more hands-on. And uh, it's a thing called bitwise instructions. So we have looked at uh, the binary system before. So let's take a look at that now. So you remember this, right? One byte is 8 bits. And maybe you also remember that uh, this thing is a little backwards. So we have bit 0, bit 1, bit 2, bit 3, bit 4, bit 5, bit 6, bit 7. So we start counting the bits from the right. 
But anyway, uh, we are going to use uh, something called bitwise instructions. That's where we handle numbers in binary form. So the way we can do that is um, we have a, a few different ways of handling uh, numbers in binary. So why would we do that? Well, there are actually several reasons and uh, this is definitely something that we'll be working with. But let me just try to load A with, um, let's say, this binary number. A bunch of zeros and a one in here. Now, uh, let's say that this was my power up variable. We talked about uh, using binary as a power up. So we could do something like, um, let me just set up a system here where I specify what each of my power ups is. So I could um, have a system like this where by just using one byte I could store, I could keep track of um, eight different power ups. So this, let's just say double jump shoes <coughs> and super shot and armor. I think that's what I used last time. And you know, whatever could be all kinds of power ups. Anyway, the point is, um, uh, power ups. So now I need to check in my code uh, if I have uh, a certain power up because, uh, uh, yeah, let's not say I need to check if I have a, a, a certain power up. Now, how can I do that? Uh, well, well, I uh, I need to check, for example, the double jump shoes. So uh, let's, you know what? Let's first of all store something in there. So we could do some something simple like this, and store in power ups. So now I have stored uh, number one, loaded number one and stored it in power ups. That's no problem. I could do it that way. Now the problem is, uh, what about if I, I want to, to uh, be able to mix and match. I want to have, maybe this is like a Metroidvania game where I could get one power up here, one power up there. And I need to be able to have double jump shoes and the armor at the same time. So if I pick up the double jump shoes, uh, I don't want this code because this code would replace whatever was inside my power ups variable. I'm saying load A and store that into power ups. So that, that just replaces whatever's in here. So that's not great if I want to have uh, multiple power-ups at the same time and I won't be able to mix and match. So what I can do now is I can say, just remove this. So I'm going to say load power-ups. So I'm going to load the contents. Now let's say this was at the beginning of the game. So the power-ups variable is zero right now but I'm going to load my power-ups and then I just want to store this byte or maybe maybe I found the armor first I haven't found the double jump shoes or super shot yet but I found the armor and that has a zero in here so as I said I could write LDA and this number but as soon as I if I do the, the same way with the double jump shoes, then that would replace this number. I don't want that. So the way I would solve that is by writing a new opcode. 
O R A. Or. I think it's OR for accumulator. I think that's what the A stands for. Okay, uh, so OR, I'm going to OR something here. Uh, yeah, there we go. And um, like that. So, what I'm doing here. I'm loading the power-ups and I'm saying or just this bit and store the result. So what's that all about? Well, this has to do with um, some sort of uh, logic. Uh, so we have something called and, we have something called or, and we have some other stuff here. But um, let's take a look at uh, the logic behind this. So the way the OR system works is that we have two bytes like this. And we're sort of comparing them against each other. And OR works like this. If there's a 1 here and a 0 here, then we get a one down here. If there's a zero here and a zero here, then there's a zero down here. If there's a one here and a one here, we get a one down here. So as long as there's a one in either of these, then the corresponding number will be one down here. Now, if there's a zero in both, then that's a zero. And one and one that's a one. So as long as there's a one in either of these bits, if any one of these is one, then the number down here is going to be one. So if we take a look at um, my power up variable, let's say that this was my power up. Uh, okay, let me make that a little bit bigger. This is my power apps variable. And I said load whatever is in power apps. That's zero from start. Then I said or or O R A in assembly language. With this, so five zeros and a one and two zeros. Alright, so five zeros. And the one, let me remove this. So we have uh, five zeros, one and two zeros. So now this is exactly the same as this. So how would this work? Well, we start here checking. There's a zero here, zero here, zero, zero, that's zero. The next one, zero, zero, oh, that's a zero as well. Okay, zero, one, oh. Well, there was a one in one of these. That means that it will be one down here. And the rest are just zeros. So by just using the ORA command, or opcode, by using this, I'm loading the power-ups. I say aura with this. Then I'm basically <clears throat> turning on, and I'm just uh, flipping this bit to on. Because in my system, I, I uh, defined that as the armor. So maybe later in the game, I pick up the double jump shoes. That's this bit. So all zeros, but one here at the end. All right. So now, now uh, remember, I stored the result back in power-ups. I loaded it first, I ran an OR with this number, and I stored it back. So running it with OR, that's flipping on this bit. All right, so what if I now 
uh, want uh, to enable the double jump shoes well then I just do an or ORA with a one here so load power-ups ORA with a one here zero and one well there was a one in one of these so that's a one down here and just store the result like that um, yeah uh, let's see uh, I didn't do it quite right now because my power-ups already had this one so um, let's say I ran the first code with the the armor this code all right so now I look I stored it <clears throat> back in power-ups so now power-ups this is the first time we're running this. So the first time uh, I'm running this and I'm running it with ORA, that means that now when I store it, <coughs> excuse me, power ups <coughs> contains this number. So that means that now this is my power ups because I already stored the, the armor bit. So now I'm going to do it again. <clears throat> I'm going to load power ups, and now there's a one in here. And then I run the ORA, and we start this process again. Zero and one, well, that's a one. Zero and zero, that's zero. One and zero, well, there's a one in here, so one down here. And there are just zeros over here. And then we store this result. So now I was able to um turn this bit on without uh ruining it uh, you know without removing the other bit just by running this ora command so that's how we can uh, flip on certain bits in one byte by running ora like this now we're going to come back to that um, quite a lot actually now there are um, there are several of these here. Uh, we have uh, a lot of different bitwise instructions, but let's look at this one before we end today. So that's and. Now the and that's kind of like uh, I wouldn't say the opposite exactly, but um, let's look at how this works. So now uh, let's uh, let's do this. So if I say load power ups and this, so if I do an and here instead of ORA, uh, so the and works like this. 0 and 1, that's 0. 0 and 0, that's 0. 1 and 0, that's 0. But if there was a 1 in here, then there would be a 1 down here. So when you run AND like this, then there needs to be a 1 in both of these in order for it to get a 1 down here. So how could we use uh, that in our game? Well, uh, you know, this is a way we could, uh, for example, uh, turn a bit to, to zero. So let's say that I, I lost the armor, but I, I don't want to uh, store zero into here because I don't want to clear all the, the power-ups. Just the armor, just this bit right here. What I could do, I could do something like this. Now I'm going to remove the armor. So I'm just writing that. I say load the power ups and one, 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 zero, one, one. So I write a one for all of these except for the armor. On that position, I write a zero. 
and then I store it back in Power Apps. So how would that work? Well, uh, let's go back and say that I have both. Let's say that I have both the uh, double jump shoes and the armor now. Now, for some, for whatever reason, I lost my armor in my game now. So I need to disable that from the power ups. So I say one, 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 zero, one, one. So by doing that, let's see what works, uh, how this will work. So one and one, that's a one. Zero and one, that's a zero. Uh, yeah, that's a zero. And uh, one and zero, that's a zero. Zero and one, that's a zero. Whoops, zero. Zero, one, zero. So uh, as long as there, uh, as long as, as we don't have a one in both places, the result would be zero. So in this case, only this uh, is set to one. Now, if I had um, another power up, let's say I had the super shot as well. So the one here, uh, let's say something like that. One, one, well, that's a one. One, zero, that's a zero. So basically by running a load power ups and this, once all over except for the one where i want to uh, turn it to zero so by doing that i keep these two power-ups the double jump shoes and the super shot but by writing a zero here with my and i turn that into zero okay this episode is getting pretty long tons of stuff in here so hopefully this wasn't too overwhelming i'm sorry if i rushed through things here but uh, there was just so much to talk about and uh, i'm kind of anxious to get to the next episode where we'll be uh, trying to do some more stuff practical stuff but the uh, the things we looked at now especially or and and uh, those are things that we will be using in our code. So it's important that we understand them. And uh, just in case you want to do some more reading, I will leave a few links in the description so you could uh, check out the details if you want. Okay, well, I think we'll say that that's enough for today. So let's just continue tomorrow. Bye-bye.